Hello everyone and welcome back to my International Space Station Assembly Series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 with Realism Overhaul. Uh, during the recording of this live stream, unfortunately, uh, the hard drive that the video was being captured to ran out of disk space, so I had to go with the backup video from Twitch, so I couldn't get audio for you guys. The in-game audio is not going to be there, so ignore the now playing up in the corner. That will not be the proper credit. I added additional music after the fact, and that'll be in the video description, the credits will be. Anyway, with that aside, this is STS-98, and the goal was to deliver the Destiny Lab to the space station. And so that will be attached to the Unity docking port. And first we'll have to remove PMA2 from that docking port. And so it's a little bit complicated because first of all, PMA2, the hitbox on it isn't exactly great. And you'll see that in a bit. But thankfully at least launches are basically consistent all the time now. Uh, we do have more than a degree of relative inclination, so that's not good. But that was down to me timing it, not, to, not due to the launch script having a problem. But anyway, here we are with the cargo bay open so you can see the destiny module in there. And so not the heaviest payload, but but with the relative inclination uh, we have a bit of a tight fuel situation. And here we are docking with the International Space Station. Now I neglected something on the destiny module uh, that I only figured out after the fact. The destiny module doesn't come with a docking port on top of it. But we probably need a docking port on top of it to dock the S0 truss. The S0 truss is the one that carries the huge solar panels for the space station. And in fact, uh, eventually we'll have to dock the truss that's currently on top of the space station to the end of the main truss. Uh, which is why I don't mind that it's a little bit askew right now. Uh, so here we are docking at the PMA3 docking port. And... Yeah, just trying to get a connection here. And yeah, there we go. So now we have to get PMA2 off and onto another docking port. Another thing that I didn't have was a docking port on the Z1 truss. And that docking port was where this was supposed to go. That would have been marginally more convenient, though potentially difficult to actually uh, fit this on. But yeah, a docking port on top of the Destiny module would have been probably necessary for the next thing that we're going to do. Grabbing the PMA2 is tough. And first of all, there's the hitbox problem. But second of all, of course, we have to decouple it before the cannon arm can grab it. I tried uh, the docking port side and now I tried aiming at the top of it to try and grab it. That didn't work out so well either. You can see it drifting off there. So obviously I had to uh, quick load after the first time I drifted off, and again right there I had to quick load again. Um, this time I tried grabbing it from the edge right there, and that seemed to work. Uh, so it's a little bit hard, I mean, first time I tried to aim right at the center of the docking port. Here you, you can see it's not, it's not very clear it's even attached to the darn thing. It looks like there's a gap between Canada Arm and the PMA2. I tried attaching it to one side of Unity, this side, since I'm lacking the docking port on the Z1 truss, and it's only a temporary placement anyway, it has to go back on to Destiny afterwards, but uh, we couldn't really tilt it the right way to fit on that one, so I went to the other side, and this way it's a little bit easier. I thought about attaching PMA2 to the Destiny module right away, but the Destiny module is the wrong side around for me to do that. Uh, it's, it's mostly symmetrical, but technically uh, it, the PMA2 would have to go on the opposite side, the side that's currently docked to the shuttle. Otherwise that would have been easier. Okay, and that was a little bit of a rough decoupling from PMA2. But we've got Canada Arm free now, and PMA2 seems to be correctly docked to the station right now. And we will have to move it again after we get Destiny on. So, Canada Arm is moving to grab the Destiny module. And there we go, that's much easier. Uh, grabbing anything from the Space Shuttle's bay is the easiest thing. Taking it off of the station is much harder because it can float away. Anyway, um, I hope I've, I mean aside from, I know I've got the docking port missing and that's gotta be a problem. And again, it's because technically Destiny didn't have a docking port there. 
It's just that in order to attach things, we can't really bolt things on the way they did. We really need a docking port to actually attach something new. Uh, there might be some other way to do it, but since we're talking about the main solar arrays, we probably need to get a docking port on that thing. Hopefully, we can have a Kerbal attach one, um, but that's all down to whether Kerbal attachment system is going to like the hitbox of this thing. Anyway, now I've uh, uh, sort of got... I mean, again, it's the same place on the PMA2, same weird place to try and grab it. And uh, we've got it off, but the location that we have PMA2 attached to Canadarm at isn't the best place to try and get onto the Destiny module in the right sort of orientation. And since later on the shuttle has to dock there to do further activities, we do want PMA2 to be oriented properly. So I decide to dock PMA2 in the bay and then try and re-grab it somewhere else. A bit complicated, but there was just no other way of getting it onto the Destiny module properly. We sort of needed to make sure that the cat arm itself was also oriented differently than it was right there. So here I am chasing the, the little adapter, the pressurized main adapter, and I think I had to quick load there, and this was a second attempt where we actually grabbed it. Okay, whoop, probably got caught on the shuttle a little bit there. Shuttle Atlantis doing its thing, and indeed, we seem to have it all right. All this station assembly takes a lot longer than a normal shuttle mission. If you just have to launch the shuttle with the script and then uh, kick something out of the bay and then bring it back down, that, that could be an hour. That could be done in an hour. Um, usually, the use of Canadarm attaching something to the station, each thing that you have to dock with Canadarm takes like half an hour to 45 minutes. Uh, so, considering we had to move PMA-3 somewhere else, dock Destiny, and we docked PMA, uh, sorry, PMA-2 um, to this shuttle and then docking it here now, that all took probably close to three hours. So yeah, it was tough work here. But, got it done, and Canadarm is now retracting. Everything seems to be in order, except, again, we don't have a place to put the S0 truss, and Atlantis is now departing. So, now to bring it back down, and let's check how much fuel do we have here. You can see me thrust limiting the RCS ports because of, out of concern for fuel. And in the end, that might hurt me because I think the reason that we ended up a bit off is because I left it thrust limited, and the launch, the sorry, reentry script did not have the ability to keep the nose up that it should have, and it was a very subtle thing. It was like it was supposed to be keep, keeping it up to 45 degrees instead of 40, but it had it at 40, so I didn't really notice in time. As you can see there, we I, we left the station with what seemed to be enough fuel, but due to the requirements of timing the deorbit, that costs a little bit more spatial fuel. We have to get to the standby orbit. Uh, standby orbit is a uh, one and a half hour orbit and that obviously makes it easier to calculate whether I'm gonna hit Cape Canaveral or not if it's a nice even number. You know if it's an hour and a half orbit you know that you're going to reset a day after 16 orbits. But obviously NASA probably didn't have to get into that standby orbit. Certainly not to do what I do which is just to calculate the return properly. Um, they could have calculated the return anyway. but. I have limited computational methods and I need it in a standby orbit to make sure everything works out. So yeah, you can see us passing Cape Canaveral right there, it's right down there, but we're way too high. And so even with the glidability of this shuttle, uh, an airliner could, uh, from this height and with this speed could probably have turned around and glide, uh, glided that distance. It's may maybe 100, 150 miles, but this cannot. So even though this feels like it's gliding a lot better than I would expect the space shuttle to, it doesn't have anywhere near the abilities of an airliner to do that. So even though we managed to get back to runway the previous two times, 
We did not manage it this time, and it's going to splash down. Fortunately, the body is all in one piece, so it splashes down intact. Not the wings and control surface, it's just the body. So that's nice, unlike the real shutter probably would. But anyway, they're back home alive. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.